got everything. I think I did. Oops. All these. Okay. Welcome, welcome to your practice, you guys. Happy Monday, happy new year, all that good stuff. So um, I'm calling uh, this class a regenerative practice. Um, there's been so much uh, big energy shifts this uh, last December um, with the big conjunction. And just and if you don't follow astrology, like there's just a lot happening, right? And uh, you know, our bodies, um, they say the body keeps score, you know, and so the body holds a lot of this energy that we experience, whether we're consciously like having a lot to process, there's a lot going on in our lives, or we're just kind of feeling the energy around us, right? Our bodies um, assimilate that. And at times, like there's these cycles of energy that we go through, right? And our body has to kind of attend to that and, and regeneration happens, right? And so uh, that's, this word's been a buzzword. Uh, uh, just recently, my husband and I were watching um, the documentary Kiss the Ground, um, which if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it, kisstheground.com, or you can go to Netflix. Um, it talks a lot about regenerative farming and our, the health of our soil. And I want you to kind of think of this concept today as we um, are going to approach our practice, because uh, we have today Mercury aspecting Pluto for the last little bit of planets that are hitting Pluto. And Pluto is this sign that is about regeneration. It's where in our life we're experiencing a great deal of transformation, um, which with any transformation, right, there comes a lot of loss or hard stuff or angst. And, um, and at times, like, our body feels that. And I know, like, right now, I'm having a lot of knee stuff. And I don't tend to have knee stuff, but um, I am. And, and Capricorn times generally trigger knees. It triggers low back. And for some of us, it'll trigger shoulders as well. And these are all kind of parts in our body which we can hold. Um, knees are about flexibility and sometimes being too flexible or inflexible with life's changes. Shoulders are a lot of where we overdo or we overcommit or we take too much on and where we have to unburden ourselves from obligations or responsibilities that aren't ours. And our low back's a lot about the root of our body, like the foundational truths that we're anchored to, the beliefs. And so all these things, right, are collective things that are happening in our bodies, we're in relationship with that. So we're going to regenerate these parts of our body today. So we're going to do some mobility, flexibility, and some strengthening. And I want you just to kind of tune into maybe if any of those places or zones for you. And if not, just maybe collectively where in your life you're experiencing regeneration and how do we support ourselves through these processes, either physically, mentally, emotionally, by breathing, by being aware, by reflecting, right? And you know, all these things that yoga teaches us about. And one of the biggest principles is that sthira sukha, which is the steadiness of our practice and the steadiness and strength that we are required. And then the, the ease and the ability to surrender and let go and let life happen, right? And realize we're not always in control of everything, right? So I want you to let those two things be our anchors today. So ease and effort or steadiness and flexibility um, within these zones. We're gonna work knees, low back, shoulders, neck, all that good stuff, right? And along with that, we'll have some other stuff. So thanks for joining me for this. I'm so glad to see you. So take a few moments to close your eyes and to settle yourself into the moment. And that might just be closing your eyes or might just be kind of tuning inward to feel and sense your body, your mind, your spirit. Just kind of closing off from doing mode from whatever your day has taken you and tuning into being mode, to perceiving, to perceiving not just the things on the outside, although that's a good place to start with our body, but also our experience of our bodies and our experience of the moment through our emotions, through our thoughts, through how we relate to energy. Maybe take a moment to feel in your body where you might have anything physical talking to you through pain or through maybe a sense of aliveness or warmth. 
Or maybe you're really aware of where life is regenerating you and where you are in regeneration with life. Maybe there's an area of your life or a topic or a place in which change is happening. And so allow all of this to be a part of your experience today and something that you can welcome into your practice. We're gonna start with a little bit of breath work. So first, nice deep breath in. Hold at the top of the breath for a moment and then exhale out through the nose. And then breathe in nice and slow, hold at the top. Then open your mouth and exhale. And now use your arms, reach up, stretch at your shoulders lift, and then exhale all the way down. So we're gonna start moving the shoulders a little bit with our breaths. So we're gonna inhale, lift the shoulders, and then exhale, just kind of let them drop. And then inhale, and then exhale. And they can drop fast or slow, but just kind of feeling shoulders lift, and feeling shoulders drop. And this can even be fast. Just kind of moving that energy around the shoulders. If that doesn't feel good, then I want you to lift the arms, inhale if the shoulders lift, and then exhale, the shoulders can drop as your arms reach down. So find one of those that work, right? Either shoulder lifts, or the arm passes, but do about five more rounds of elevating and depressing your scapula, All right? Just kind of moving out maybe some heaviness or some energy in the shoulders that might want to be regenerated. Couple more. And then just pause for a moment and feel and connect to the energy in your shoulders. Because after moving them, perhaps there's a little bit more awareness and presence there. And now the next bit of breath we're gonna do is we're gonna inhale. And we're gonna inhale through the nose and you're gonna let your hands press and round and then exhale. Or actually, sorry, inhale, exhale. Inhale through the nose, sorry, I said it backwards. Exhale through the mouth. Palms open, chest lifts, exhale. And really move some breath through your body. So the shoulders are drawing together and then the shoulders are drawing apart. So we're just moving across the scapula. Me a little bit of a intensified exhale. Smooth it out. We have two more. And then just pause for a moment, feel and breathe. Just kind of notice shifts in energy or shifts in warmth, heat. And it's the same movement, but now we're gonna inhale through an O mouth, and then exhale through the uh, nose. O mouth, inhale, nose, exhale. O mouth, inhale, nose, exhale. Keep going. Like you're sipping in, a straw. That breath practice has a really calming effect to the brain and it stimulates the pituitary gland. Let's do three more. And then nice and slowly sit up, nice and tall. Feel and sense your shoulder blades, your chest, just kind of noticing what's there. Hmm. 
And then just drop your right ear to your right shoulder. Pick it up, drop left ear to left shoulder. And just do that a few more times on each side. Try to keep your shoulders fixed so it's just your head moving. So keeping those collarbones wide, shoulders dripping down your back. One more time on each side. And you can just kind of sync this up with your breath or you might be moving a little bit outside your, your breath. It might be a little longer. And now you're gonna turn your head to the right. Turn your head to the left. And once again, try to keep your shoulders fixed, wide and moving down your back. And just moving your head. I'm just kind of noticing as you're breathing, kind of if one side feels a little tighter than the other side, right? We're staring at screens a lot more. And so sometimes we're getting kind of extra tension in the neck, shoulder area that we may not catch. So just keep using your breath. And then coming back to the center and you're gonna drop your chin to your chest and do kind of some half circles. Some of you might can do full circles, but sometimes I like just the half circles, just to keep again, shoulders wide and just allowing sweet spots. You get an extra spot where you're like, oh yeah, right there. Maybe play around with shoulders wide and down or just keep moving, just freeing up energy in the shoulders and the neck. Keep moving your jaw, all those good things. <sighs> All right, my friends, maybe one more round. And just allowing yourself to come to a neutral, just kind of feel and sense your body. Hmm. Okay, let's head on our backs. So we're gonna now work with the low back and the knees. So right away, just have your legs up in the air. And go ahead and just kind of wiggle your uh, ankles and toes. You can have your knees slightly bent if you need to. And then just go ahead and put your hands on your knees and drop your heels to your rear and then straighten your legs back. Heels to your rear, so you're gonna feel your hamstrings engage, extend through the knees. And it doesn't have to be like a totally, your knee totally extended and flexed to the nth degree. It's just kind of moving and kind of opening up the back of the knee joint. So really use your breath and keep, keep attuning to the energy that you sense there, right? Does it feel stuck and sticky? Does it feel kind of swollen and kind of over lubricated? We have different experiences of, of the energy sometimes, right? Sometimes it feels um, more dense. Sometimes it feels very light. So just kind of checking out what you sense. And then one more time. And then you're just gonna take a knee down towards, you might pull one down and then extend. So this is different than we just did in that I'm moving the femur bone. So I'm bringing the thigh towards me as I bend the knee and then I'm extending it. So think of just a little bit different, more like hip flexion. And just do that a few more times. And now drop the leg as you do this. So bring the knee in and extend through the legs. So the knee comes in and I extend. So now I'm opening up the front of the hip, getting that quad. And I'm keeping my core nice and strong. So I'm pulling the navel in, getting my low back. To get a little bit of a stretch, so I'm not lowering my leg to the floor. So I'm not gonna over stretch here, but hopefully feeling a little bit of core stability. This is nice for the low back. Let's do two more. And then just hug the knees in and maybe you're rolling around or making circles just to iron out the low back. So kind of feel that full circumference of your low back where I can feel kind of the edges of the sacrum bone, which is that space at the kind of at the base of your spine. So kind of feel those bones. I'm kind of waking up energy here and then place your feet down on the floor. Then uh, you can put a block between your legs if you'd like some extra support. We're just gonna again play with that low back energy. So on the exhale, pull your hip points together, navel towards the ground so that your low back presses into the mat. And then press through your heels and lift your hips up, bridge pose. If you'd like to lift your arms up and over, you can. Feel your knees stretch away from your fingertips. Feel your tailbone lengthen. 
So you have core engagement here. And then lift your heels up and nice and slowly, can you roll from upper spine to middle spine to lower spine? So you're getting a little press out of your whole spine. And then hands come down, natural spine. And you can even let your pubic bone draw forward so you accentuate the curves in your back. Then do the opposite, imprint the spine. As you pull navel back, hip points draw towards one another. Then I press through my heels, lift hips, lift arms, stretch. Feel a big stretch from the tops of your knees off to your fingertips and then lift your heels so there's more space and more time to lower your spine so slowly down. Take your time and really feel for any edges that feel stick or stuck. And we'll do that one more time. So I'm gonna let the hips draw forward a bit. So I'm gonna have a lot of curve. I'm gonna minimize the curve now as I engage my navel, press through heels, lift your arms up, stretch. Take an extra breath to really stretch out the low back, reach through those fingertips, and then lift your heels, lower down really slow. Use your full exhale, like really using the breath to kind of squeeze out anything ready to be regenerated. And then relax. We'll widen our feet as wide as the mat. Arms can come up. Now you're going to be doing palm up, palm down with your arms. So I'm just kind of rolling, right? I don't have to lift them. I was like showing you this to accentuate. So I'm going to go internal and external rotation as I flip flop my legs. Just kind of getting the sides of the knees and the insides, the outside edges of the knees and the insides. And we'll get all of that today as we work through the knee joint, right? Inner thighs, outer hips, because they also support knee health. So I'm just rotating the arms at the socket. If you, that's too confusing, you can do this with your hands. So you can do the rotation with a bent arm if that's easier to feel at the, at the joint instead of at the elbow. So you can try both. These can be fast or slow. Make sure you feel the inner thigh stretch. So make sure you get enough time with those legs widening that you can kind of feel the difference in the outer hips as the legs drop to one side and then the inner thighs as the legs widen. So you might even slow it down your windshield wipers to kind of feel how this massages the low back and the inner and outer thighs and knees. Okay, let's do one more. And then coming up and just kind of stabilizing this energy right now. So just press into a bridge. So you can have your hands palms down, palms up. Then just neutralizing spine. So just like we were before, pressing through the inner seams of your feet, drawing your thigh bones wide, letting the shoulders reach down away from the ears. You don't have to necessarily back bend, but just let the neck be nice and long. Take some deep breaths. So not too big of a back bend shape, just a low back stretch, just a warming up of the legs. And then nice and slowly lower the hips, bring the knees in. One more time, stretch the low back. And then rock and roll yourself up to a seat and then to all fours. So you might want blocks at the front of your mat or just a block or just something for a part of the flow because we're gonna start with a little bit of standing work and uh, then we'll start to get more into that regeneration or rejuvenation, kind of um, more of the stretching. So go ahead and take your hands out like you have uh, your index finger at number 12 on a clock dial. And we did these a long time ago, you guys, if you remember, they're scapular push-ups. And again, I just want you to get energy moving through your shoulder blades. Keep your elbows straight, your arms strong like plank, and drop your chest between your arms as if you're trying to drop your chest to the floor. Shoulder blades will pin together. And then dome your upper back as you press your hands down. So I'm gonna keep my navel strong and I'm not moving my hips. This is not a cat cow. It's a scapular push-up. okay? So shoulders together, shoulders apart. Close your eyes and imagine just kind of making some space between your shoulder blades and between your collarbones as if you're like flossing, flossing the space to allow it to regenerate. Kind of getting some new space there, some breath. So really uh, let your breath come in. Okay, do it one more time. And then sit back for a moment. We're gonna stretch the, uh, the front of the leg. So walk your hands back, if this is okay. So I have my thumbs forward. You can just keep your hips down and you might be getting a good enough stretch. 
or lengthen through your tailbone. So I'm gonna allow my curves of the low back to flatten a bit and lift your hips and just kind of feel that. And you might come up and down. But again, getting that stretch from the front hips through the, knee, through the knees and just allow your breath to again, rinse that whole front body. And breathe a lot. Like really imagine that your breath is the rejuvenating force. Your, your awareness, your breath, and that's all that's required. And then go ahead and come forward. Tuck your toes under, downward facing dog. Let's get the back of the knees. So you're gonna bend your knees generously so that you can really stretch that low back. So plug into those arms and press them out away so that you can really guide your hips back. Will your triceps draw towards one another, but feel your shoulder blades glide apart. Then from here, you're gonna straighten the back of the legs and let the heels drop. Then you can bend the knees and let them come forward. So it's almost like you're doing that same thing they did on our back, but just allowing the low back to stretch, hitting the backs of the kneecaps, a little bit of energy. Just a few more times. It can be fast or slow. Keep breathing a lot, that's what's most important. And then come forward to plank, just to synergize, just to kind of allow everything to settle. You can put your knees down if you need to. So there's a neutral spine, just the natural curves. I'm trying, drawing the belly back and inflating through the scapulas, just a little bit so I feel kind of more synergy between the front and the back of the body. And then knees down. Last little bit on the shoulders that we're gonna do. So uh, just to show you this without, this is elevation. My shoulders reach to my ears. This is depression. This is what we did at the beginning of class. We're gonna match that with our scapular push-up. So kind of showing you what that looks like. I'm gonna draw my shoulders to my ears as I don't. Then I'm gonna draw the shoulders away from my ears and then I'm gonna drop and do the same thing. So it's like I'm doing a little circle. So I'm basically doing the scapular push-ups, but now I'm adding some depression and some elevation with it, right? So let's do it together. So let's draw the shoulders back away from our ears and drop the chest, okay? So now draw the shoulders towards your ears, keep the chest dropped, and now lift up. Dome your back with your shoulders near your ears. Move the shoulders away from your ears, keep your dome back, and now drop your chest between your shoulders. Okay, move the shoulders towards your ears. Dome your upper back. Drop the shoulders away from your ears. Drop the chest. Keep going. Lift the shoulders, lift the chest. Drop the shoulders, drop the chest. Just keep going. And if you forget where you are, just kind of moving in that circular motion, right? It's like we would be drawing a circle. You can go faster if you want with your shoulders with straight arms. And you can go both directions. And if it's confusing, do it in parts. Just do small little parts. Just play with it for a couple more breaths. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. Just breathing and feeling that lubrication, right, of the shoulder. And then when you need a break, because it'll warm up quickly, right, sit back again. Now step your right leg forward. So you have your right ankle and your left knee and walk it back a bit. And again, lengthen through your tailbone. Lift your hips, stretch your chest, and you can come down and up again last time. Just feeling that stretch of the front of the knee joint. And then as you're ready, walk the hands forward, come into a standing split. So we're gonna straighten the right knee, and then we're gonna bend, and you can tap the knee down, just like where we started. And then lift and straighten. Tap the shin down, bend. You can use your blocks. Lift up, extend. Drop the shin. We have a couple more. And then as you're ready, you're gonna bring that right shin down and then walk the right foot forward and come into a lunge. So go ahead and let the hips release forward and just back in and out a few times. Kind of getting a deeper stretch, that frontal uh, left hip. And I'm just, again, 
really gently coming in and out. And then come forward and come on up to a low lunge. Okay, so you can back out a bit enough to feel the little belly lift, maybe even let the fingertips lift, stretch up for a moment, let those uh, that lift from the core help you get a little bit of length and then let the hips surrender, front shin for surrender. And then lower your hands to the blocks just so you have some support. And we're gonna take the heel to our rear and then let it go. So I wanna be, be sure that you're on the top of the left kneecap. I'm sorry, that like the, not the top of the actual patella, but above the patella, just so that you're not pressing on the knee joint. And if this is too much, you can kind of elevate a little bit. Uh, you can kind of use your hands a little bit so there's less weight. Do the best you can. We're just gonna do this for like three more times. You should be feeling your hamstring engage. One more time. And then from here, if you can, reach back with either hand to grab the inside of your foot. Outside of you have the opposite hand and just give a little stretch here. And we're gonna hold. So if you need a strap, use a strap to lasso your ankle. And take five deep breaths, regenerating breaths to stretch from that front left hip out through your left knee. Let that right shin sink forward. Feel a drawing of energy from your pelvis towards your heart. So there's a little bit of lift. Take one or two more breaths. And then go ahead and drop that left foot down. You're gonna to come to a warrior two. So heel to arch. So set it up first, get your legs nice and strong and then windmill arms up and around. And I'm just gonna turn so I'm not facing away from you, but you stay where you are, warrior two. Then we're gonna take that left arm and we're gonna bring it across and hook with the right. So that we're in a left side shoulder stretch. So I can allow my head to kind of turn right ear to right shoulder, that might feel good. Or I can keep my head upright. Find two strong legs, find two long side waists and breathe. So I wanna feel that right inner thigh getting a little bit of opening some strength on the outer right knee and some strength on the outer left knee. So that's the outer right knee and the outer left knee are strengthening. The inner right knee and the inner left knee are what's getting some space. So maybe you tune in to either of those places, just to kind of notice what's happening. Feel that left side of your shoulder, relax. Two more nice deep breaths. Okay, open your arms. Take a half bind with your left arm. So inner rotate it to grab towards your waist. And with your right hand, reach up and back or grab onto the side of your head for a reverse warrior. Now with your left hand at the low back, pull your navel back and lengthen through your tailbone. This is gonna help support the low back. As you hold on to your head, let your head reach towards the rear of your mat. Take three more deep breaths. And then straighten your right leg, keep lifting back, and then open through your right arm and come into triangle pose. And this can be any type of triangle. So it can be arm up, you like the half bind. It can even be an uh, arm overhead or a hang. But we're again, we're strengthening the outer right knee. We're lengthening the inner right knee. So feeling that strength and steadiness with that balance and ease. Bring your tailbone forward so you support your lumbar. Lengthen both sides of your waist. You have one more nice deep breath. And then both hands frame your right foot and then pop your back heel up. So now you're in a low lunge, okay? Similar to what we did, we're gonna drop the left knee down just for a moment, and then we'll straighten the left knee and the right knee. Okay, we bend both, let the chest maybe lift, straighten both. Do this with your breath and maybe with blocks under your hands. And again, feeling that extension and flexion of the knee joints. Don't get too deep, right? We just wanna get some movement there. 
And then the next time that you're in that forward fold, stay there. So again, there's gonna be a, a lot of openness to that inner right knee and hopefully the inner left thigh and knee, some strength on the outer edges of the legs. So find that neck release if you can. Try and extend that right knee fully if you can. And then as you're ready, bend the right knee and come up to a high lunge. And then interlace your hands back behind you. So I like sometimes to bend the elbows and to press the thumbs into my sacrum and get a nice little chest uh, stretch. I can even float the arms for a little bit more, okay? So go ahead and fire up that chest. So you can either just stay right here and open through the collarbones. You can extend the arms if you want. And if you want a little bit more, step in for warrior three. Lifting through the belly, and then both side waist lengthen. You're choosing if you want a, a, a high lunge with the bind or warrior three. Stay with it for three more breaths, whatever you've chosen. And then releasing your breath and your bind, come back to a low lunge where we started and then step the left leg to the right corner of your mat. So that now you're in an IT band stretch. So for some of us, I'll need to uh, bend the right knee and move the legs closer. So you might have a wider stance. It's the left outer hip that we want to stretch. So keep the left leg straight. And as you firm that left inner thigh line, right, as an anchor, I can kind of feel a release now to the left outer knee. And to enhance the stretch, I might walk my hands to the right. And by walking my hands to the right, I just kind of accentuate the left hip moving away from that action. Head can relax and you might want hands on blocks. So we're getting the outer left hip now to release. We want to firm the inner right knee, the inner left knee, excuse me. So remember we're working the whole practice with effort and ease and how both create regeneration. Take one more nice deep breath. And then bring your hands back to center, uncross your legs, bend your knees, come up chair pose. Sink on back. And then straighten arms and legs, reach up, and then hands meeting at your heart. And just find a moment just to pause and feel those movements. Really tuning in to that theme of regeneration. Where can you support your regeneration by breathing, by finding the areas in which maybe there needs to be more strength, maybe less, maybe less flexibility, and the areas in which we are required to call for more flexibility, more ease, surrender, less effort. Arms are going to sweep up, big stretch, look up, and then exhale forward fold. Long spine, take a deep breath, widen those collarbones, fold, for, fold forward, step into plank pose. Nice deep breath. Come forward, top of a push-up, elbows hug in, your chest stays broad and uh, lifted, chaturanga to your belly. Untuck your toes and come into a cobra. So pull hands back, anchor pubic bone and feet. And then on the exhale, we're gonna lower and we're gonna do a cat back child's pose. So cat back and rock back. Keeping the upper back rounded. All fours, neutral spine, downward facing dog. Lift your heels up really high, drop your heels to the right and feel a left side body stretch. You can even bend your knees to kind of play with that. Lift your heels up nice and high. Drop your heels to the left. Feel a right side body stretch. Drop your head. You can bend the knees if you want. Both knees center, both toes center. Bend your knees if you want more low back release and drop your head. Keep letting those triceps draw towards the midline. Keep letting your shoulder blades 
draw away from the midline. So you're widening your upper back. Drawing the energy down from the armpits, through the arms to the palms, head drops. And then as you're ready, drop to your knees. And then one more time, and I'm gonna turn around. One more time for those scapular, your scapular push-ups, pat cow if you'd rather do that, or if you like kind of just the loosey-goosey rolling around, do that, or if you liked those circles that we did. I just want you to move your shoulders with your breath for just like five rounds, right? It could be anything you want to move hips, to move shoulders. Really good breathing, you guys. Like use your exhales, just kind of really kind of like you're like a snake shedding its skin, right? Just like oh, getting all that energy that needs to move through, just giving it a pathway with your breath. And then sit back when you're ready. Take your left leg and step it forward. So I have my left foot and my right knee somewhat close, and you can decide how, how close together. Walk your hands back. So I can use fists or blocks. I lengthen to my tailbone and I might elevate the hips off my right heel and just kind of lower. So kind of lifting and lowering. I'm not really using my left foot that much. I'm just kind of, just for a moment or two, just feeling that, that stretch from the front of the hip. And then maybe there's a pause and a little extra stretch there before I send the hips down and then I'm walk my hands forward and it's a left leg standing split. Then I just tap either the foot down or even the whole shin down and I'm lifting and lowering. So this left leg, I'm bending the knee joint and then I'm extending it. So flexion and extension. Same thing with the top leg. Just trying to, again, get energy moving in the way these joints were designed to move. One more time, and then I'll put that knee down, and I'll step the left leg forward even further. And for right now, I'm just going to move the hips forward and back, maybe on blocks if I want. Just a little bit, just again, move the pelvis, ease into the stretch, nothing big. Really use your inhales and your exhales. Then as you come forward, pull your navel back, climb up to your lunge. And you might even like to walk back a bit. Sometimes it, it helps me to move my hips back to find my core before I release. Hook your thumbs if you like it, reach your arms up. Allowing yourself to lift from your pelvis through your core, through your spine, and allowing there to be some surrender, right? That effort and ease. Maybe you squeeze your head with your biceps. Maybe you let the elbows go wide. Now relax your hands down to a block if that helps you. And again, I might be more upright, but make sure you're not on the patella, but I'm actually above the patella. So I'm like right here, okay? And I'm gonna heel in, heel out. Now for some of us, if you don't do a lot of hamstring strengthening, you might cramp. So if you cramp, just take a break. We're not doing too many of these, but I want you to do a little bit of strengthening from the hamstring. Because that's a way that we promote our knee health and our balance, right? As we strengthen and lengthen. And then whenever you're ready, go ahead and draw that heel in again. Either hand can reach back. I'm using my opposite hand. You can reach the same hand and allow the hips to come forward. You can use a block. And I'm just drawing that heel towards my rear, letting my hips release. So I can make this as uh, intense or non-intense as I want. Now, nice deep breaths. Breathing. Using that open mouth exhale anytime that helps. Now let it go. We're going to find warrior two. So set your legs up. Windmill those arms up and around. So once again, the, the parts that are strengthening, the steadiness comes from right outer hip, outer knee, outer foot, left outer hip, hugging under and forward so that I can find some openness through these channels, the inner seams. Take your right arm forward. Hook with your left. And again, I can drop left ear to left shoulder, or I can keep my head upright. 
Now really amplify your breath, right? That's that regenerative force that finds that smoothness between those extremes of steadiness and easefulness. So you can get both of your side waist to lift. Last deep breath in. Open your arms up. Your right arm internally rotates and reaches for your left hip crease or it just comes to the small of your back, either one. And then we'll take our reverse warrior and I'm grabbing my head so that I can get a little bit of shoulder release. So I'm gonna let that right shoulder hug down and my head is heavy. Staying strong through my legs and lifted through my belly. That way the low back doesn't have any type of tensioning, right? So my belly pulls towards my low back and my right hand is there to lengthen my tailbone. Just kind of steadies it down. Now straighten your left leg, reach your left arm skyward, and then tip into triangle pose of any type. So you can have a hand on the block, hand over, uh, arm over ear, you can drape. But steady your pelvis through your core, right? The pelvis can turn, it's not, it's not locked in any place, but it's steady through your core. Then once again, I find the areas in which I'm finding ease, which is my left inner thigh, my right inner thigh to knee, and my outer hips are finding the steadiness here. And my core, take another couple deep breaths. And as you're ready, hands to the floor, pop your back knee up, bend your right knee, bend your left. So I, again, I have two bent knees, but I have two straight legs. And I just do this with my breath, inhale, exhale. Now some of us that are really flexible might have to work on not overextending the knee joints. So you're kind of paying attention to the habits that you notice about yourself. Some of us need to find more ease and we're too rigid, right? We have maybe overdeveloped strength. And then some of us might be too flexible and we might have to find a little bit more of that steadiness. So just keep investigating what you're finding on these places. Fold forward and hold. Allowing the pelvis to drop forward a bit. So the low back gets lots of space, head relaxes. And I'm trying to fully extend through that left knee as much as I can. I might feel a little bit of hugging together the inner thighs, but more of the strength of the outer hips that allows the inner thighs to lengthen. So you, you can kind of think of it in two different ways. Not so much that the hugging together so much that there's rigidity, but enough of that outer hip strength that causes more synergy. And as you're ready, bend both knees and come up high lunge. So I can be in a two bent knee high lunge or I can straighten the back leg eventually. Take your arms back, the non habitual thumb on top. Bent arms, straight arms, whatever works. So we're opening through the chest. So you're gonna stay here, or you're gonna come forward, and maybe you want a warrior three. So you're gonna choose whatever works for you. We have five nice deep breaths. So really drop into your breath. Breathing across the chest, strengthening the upper back, easing up the chest. One more. Release your hands down to the mat or blocks. Step your right leg behind your left so that your right leg aims for the left corner of the mat. Now, for, I can have two straight knees if that works for me. If it doesn't, I'm going to bend the left knee to find some at ease. It's the right outer hip that I want to release, so I want to steady through the right inner seam of my leg. So I'm from my inner thigh, gonna reach into my inner foot and allow that left, that right hip to release. I might walk my blocks to the left so that my torso moves away from my right hip. And just send your breath there, just noticing what you feel in the outer right hip. Does it feel dense? Does it feel kind of spotty? Does it feel great? Just kind of noticing textures, even noticing thoughts. A 
Okay, you're gonna unhook the right leg, come to a both leg forward fold. So I might bend my knees, I might widen my feet, just shake it out. Kind of evening it out, feeling the low back nice and stretched. So grabbing elbow crooks helps you release the low back or holding on to your head or pressing into the calves and letting your shins press into your calves. Whatever works. Couple more breaths. And then bend those knees. You can roll up nice and slow, kind of feeling your vertebra stack, arms reach up, hands to the heart. Breath in, breath out. Arms sweep up, big stretch. However you wanna get down, uh, long spine or rolling forward fold. Halfway lift, back into plank pose. Let that be a pose to steady. Find that strength of your core. Come forward, tips of your toes, chaturanga to your belly. We're gonna bend the right knee, grab onto it with our hand. Either you're just doing a thigh stretch, so I'll just let my head, my forehead fall into my forearm, or I can press and lift. So I can kind of decide what would be good, or I can straighten my left arm to the floor, or I can hover. Five breaths here. You choose. Getting some strengthening for the low back. And then go ahead and set that down, release the right leg. Feel free to make a forehead pillow and windshield wiper the hips a bit. Bending your left leg, reaching back with your left hand, I can just do a stretch, just bringing the heel back, feeling my tailbone lengthen a bit, or I can kick foot into hand, Prop up on my right forearm, reach my right arm forward if that's better. Lots of options, you're just, it's whatever supports the lumbar. Really breathe. One more. And let it go. Make that forehead pillow, shake your hips out. And then three rounds of cobra kind of push up. So walk the hands back, pull the hands back, lift the chest, inhale. Exhale, pull the elbows back and lower. Two more times, inhale, lift, neck is long, exhale. One more time, hold at the top of this inhale, stretch back from your toes, reach your collarbones wide, and then exhale, release, round and upper back, cat back, and child's pose. Nice deep breaths. And then when you're ready, come on, go ahead and come up and then scooch onto your back and have a strap handy. If you don't have a strap, a dish towel works, right? Uh, a blanket even can work, like a light blanket. So we've worked a lot of front and back. We're gonna go back to the inner and the outer knee. And we're gonna do a little bit of movement strengthening and then we're gonna relax it, right? So that effort and ease, okay? So uh, starting with the right leg, you can bend the left knee if your low back is tender or straighten the left leg. But go ahead and loop the strap right above your right heel, okay? If you can fully extend your right knee, I'd love that. That's why this straps over the heel makes it a little bit easier. Remember, left leg down is a great anchor. So I want you to take that right leg out to the right as far as you can without uh, letting your uh, left hip release, and then move it up and down, up and down so that you feel the strength of your inner right thigh. So I'm gonna start to feel a little bit inner thigh toning. We're gonna do this for about 20 seconds, so don't go too far. Keep using your core to stabilize, left shoulder can stabilize. You're gonna feel a lot of work happening, and we're just gonna try and ease the leg down a little further. Now feel a little bit of contraction hold, so feel as if there's like an active resistance pushing your thigh down and you're resisting that, and then relax it. So I'm using my right elbow as a kickstand, and my left knee, if it's bent, can release, so I get this nice, good inner uh, pelvis release. 
Now breathe into the right inner thigh, that inner right pubic bone area, and imagine energy dissipating from your pelvis towards your inner knee, towards your inner foot. So try and follow that pathway and feel your ankle getting further and further away from your right pelvis. And using your breath, using the support of your strap, try to find some ease to that right inner knee. Use your breath, so maybe an open mouth exhale can be awesome, or a sigh. And then pull that leg up. Extend the left leg all the way out. Same thing, so I'm gonna use my right uh, thumb and move my right hip, and I'm gonna go out and in. Okay, so it's almost like a ballistic movement, you know, or that kind of bouncing, but I want it to be a little bit more controlled than that. My pelvis is not lifting off the mat. So this is just my leg going towards my body in a way. Okay. And I want you to imagine that you're pressing uh, against something. So I want to imagine a little bit of extra force, almost like if I were to pull the strap to the left and I'm resisting that as I lift. Keep going for about 10 more seconds. You want to strengthen this outer right hip. And then just let it go. So again, I'm not lifting. This is not a twist. We'll do that later. You're drawing the right hip down and with the back of my pelvis down, I'm letting the leg fall towards the midline to whatever degree my flexibility allows. Toes are being drawn towards the navel. Right hip down. And I want to find as much ease, which means I might have to come out of this outer right hip, outer right knee. So trace the energy from your outer hip to your outer knee, your outer ankle. And it might be hard to do that. So you just start, you just put your awareness there. Even if you don't sense any energy or you don't sense anything physically happening in your body, right? It starts with your awareness. Because where your awareness goes, the energy flows. And so eventually, over time, the more and more you put your awareness there, the more you start to notice sensation. You might notice colors, might feel more of the energy. One more breath. And then bring it to neutral. Hold both hands on the strap for a moment and lift and lower a bit. So again, I'm going to pull and I'm going to resist. Almost like I'm pushing into the strap. One more time, and then just take, take a stretch. Trying to fully extend the back of the right knee. And then just let that leg go and extend both of your legs for a moment and just see if you can notice a difference between the energy of your right leg and the energy of your left. Specifically the low back the kneecap, maybe even the right shoulder. And then when you're ready, you're gonna bend the right knee. Then I'm gonna hook the lasso around the left heel, take it into my left hand. And again, this is that, again, you're gonna to have to pretend there's an active resistance that you're pushing into as you bring your leg towards your body. Now I've got the quiver zone going on in my right leg because it just worked. So you might have that too. So again, just that active resistance, imagining that I have a little bit of heavy air I'm pressing through. And then I'm gonna let that leg go out to the side to whatever degree it wants to. And then using my awareness to trace a line from my left inner thigh down to my left inner kneecap, down to my left inner knee to my left inner ankle. And if you don't get any sense of what's going on there, trace it with your mind's eye and open up those energy pathways so that our feet are connected to our pelvis and those joints, those structural places in our body have vitality, a flow of energy, the ability to find, to find steadiness and the ability to find ease. Okay, bring the leg up, straighten your right leg. And again, letting it go over to the side and against imaginary force as you bring the leg in, that's where the imaginary force is. 
So I strengthen and then I relax. So even if you, you're having some knee stuff, this can be really good stuff to do over and over again, to kind of this uh, active mobility and then the passive stretches or more active stretches, I should say, when you're ready, just let that leg drop. Remember that uh, left hip, it draws down towards the right heel, but the toes draw up and that's how I get the stretch deeper. But we're not looking for max, we're looking here for a place in which I can use my breath to surrender. So it doesn't have to be max. I just wanna find some sensation to work with. Okay, then when I'm ready, I'm gonna bring my leg back up to neutral. And again, uh, I'll use the strap to kind of create my force. So I might push into the strap as I go down and then let it come up. So just working with that hamstring muscle. In the extended phase, which is not a phase that our hamstring is used to getting a lot of strength with. And then I'm gonna hold. I can choke up on the strap to let my shoulders hang and that can be really nice for me. <sighs> Sigh it out if you need. And then release the strap. Go ahead and let your legs come out, shake them out a bit. So maybe some windshield wipers of the legs. And take a moment to feel that out. We're gonna end with a little bit of breath work, but I want you to first kind of, uh, since you're on your back, stay on your back, and then we'll end with the breath work before we sit up. So just take a moment to fully extend your body. Maybe some clearing breaths out through your mouth or sighs. And just trusting those regenerative forces within your own life, right? To some degree, life is regenerating us. We don't necessarily have to do anything. <laughs> That's kind of the, the gift and the curse, right? <laughs> and so trusting your breath, trusting your body, letting yourself rest in this relaxed state of non-doing. And even if it doesn't feel relaxing not to do, just allow yourself to surrender to whatever state you find. And that is part of that process, right? Of the effortlessness. And what yoga says is the, uh, the yoga sutras teach us is the more that we return to our practice, right? The more that we were returning to these things that provide the steadiness to us, you know, our meditation, our breathing, our mindfulness, right? Then the, step, then the effort becomes effortless. Then there's a certain amount of momentum that carries all of our efforts, right? We become more aligned in the energy that we are. And then it requires less energy to do all that we do. And those polarities of effort and ease become more like, uh, more, more tethered together, more unified, less abrupt. But there's steadiness when we relax. There's a sense of place. and our effort becomes easeful. Take five deep breaths and on your inhale, really allow yourself to gather in the deepest breath you can, hold at the top and then take your time exhaling as if you're just sending that rejuvenating breath into all of your body. And just do that as slowly as you'd like. So you can do it out through your mouth or with closed mouth, whatever would work.
And then just after that fifth breath, just taking a moment to feel and assess how you are experiencing this moment once again. Noticing shifts in your energy or your mood or your body. Like even the slightest shift, right? Notice that. That is regeneration. And sometimes regeneration is uncomfortable when we notice a pattern. We notice, oh, wow, I didn't know I had so much pain there or so much. That is a force of regeneration, right? Because now we have the awareness to act in ways that would serve the regeneration. So when you're ready, come up to a seat and we're gonna do a last little breath practice to balance the hemispheres of the brain, which again balances the parts of us that make linear decisions, right? The doing part of us, the analytical, and the being part of us, the magic, creative, allowing part of us, okay? So we're gonna plug the right side of your, and we're gonna breathe in through the right, out through the left. Breathe in through the right. Out through the left. Breathing in. It's that analytical part, breathing out. One more time. And then just let your hands go for a moment. Take a moment to just feel that effect. And then we're gonna breathe into the right side, out to the left. So we breathe in right, out left. Or sorry, did I already do, do the opposite of what we just did? I think it's breathe in left, out right. But it doesn't matter, just do the opposite. That sounds like I confuse myself. We just want to do the opposite of what we were just doing. And through that left side, out through the right. Two more. And then just open your palms up, rest your hands and take a moment to just pause and let the practice integrate. Take your arms and reach up, twist to the right and drop your left ear to your left shoulder. Let your arms reach up. Twist to the left, drop your right ear to your right shoulder. Both arms come up. And then exhale, hands to your heart. May this practice be a tool for us to continue to work with life in the ways in which life is inviting us towards regeneration, healing, rejuvenation. So the light in me honors the light in you, friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. We will be back here Thursday at 4.30. Namaste. Have a wonderful week, you guys. Thank you for...